Hello and welcome to part three of the Porsche car modeling series from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today we're going to move on to the back end of the car and finish up the primary modeling of the majority of the structure, at which point we will then be ready to go on to things like the wheels, the mirrors, windows, smaller details such as headlights and lamps and such, and then also finally going on to tweak the final proportions and get the overall feeling of the car complete. So, for this section, like I said, we're going to be modeling the back end here, and I need to go ahead and swap around my references a little bit, primarily the front one, as I want to keep the side, obviously. So, if I switch over to my references folder, you'll notice that I've added a couple more, and it's this green one and the white one of the same model, and it's still the, uh, the GT3911 RS, and... What we're doing here is, I've just pulled in a couple more, and they're from Wiki Commons, so they're all licensed under Creative Commons use. And the main thing that I need is a better view of the back end here, such that I can see these details. And my previous references did not offer that. I've got a top end here, and a back view here, which this back view is perfect for doing the, the viewport reference, but it didn't show us all the details we needed. So I went ahead and pulled in a couple more. So we're going to be using this one here, as the back reference to replace the front. So let's go ahead and load that in. So switching back to Blender here, I'm just going to pull up the view menu, go to background image, and click the folder to load a new one. And in this case, I'm actually going to hit cancel and control click on the folder, which will bring up the, the preview file browser. And we'll click on this and select image to load that in. Okay, now we're going to need to do some adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and hit spacebar or shift space. Excuse me to load this in with the as full screen. And I'm going to hit control 1 to flip to the back view and we need to go ahead and position our reference as best as possible. Although actually before we do this we need to actually go back by hitting shift space so we can see both views and we need to use another measurement thing to line these two up. Since our mesh only consists of the front we don't have a good reference point. So I'm actually going to go ahead and hide the mesh and then with my cursor center, by hitting Shift C, I'm going to hit Spacebar, Add Mesh Cube. I can now use this from the side view to line it up with key points along the mesh, such as the bottom of the, of the bumper, the top of the spoiler, and the top of the car overall. And actually, uh, most importantly, the bottom and top of the taillights. And the reason I say that's most important is because the taillights are one thing that, since it's closest to the camera, it's going to have the least amount of distortion from the focal length on the camera itself. So, you know, we really can't use the top and the bottom necessarily for an accurate reference, but we can use things like the tail light and the, and the, the spoiler because they're much closer to the actual, actual camera. So you can see we need to scale this down. So I'm just going to hit the size down to 3, and we can see we need to then move it down, and we'll maybe take it up to 3.1. Whoops, 3.1, not 2.1. Okay, and that's looking about right. Let's take it down a little bit more, maybe just a one even. Okay, let's try 1.02. And that looks about right. Let's go ahead and unhide our car model. And we can see that there's definitely some, some ambiguity between them. This appears right based on our our reference or our guide, but it's really not. And so this we're definitely going to have to do some some compensation between the two. And so in this case, really, the guide actually isn't going to help all that much. So I'm going to hit Alt-H again to unhide this. And what we're going to do is scale it up so it's just slightly larger. The sides here are slightly larger than the entire thing. And actually, just 4.1 looks right about right. Uh, let's try just 4 even which is what I was actually at originally. And now you'll notice something in that our wheel wells don't line up. And this is because there's actually a mistake in my, in my model in the previous part in that the wheel wells are not actually even with each other. If we look at this, we can see that this actually sticks out a fair bit. And we can see this even better if we go and look at some more references, say here, we can see that it comes out a good few inches further. And so we're going to need to make those adjustments on our model. Um, and this is something that we can do later on, or we can do it as we go. We just need to be aware of it. And so I'm actually going to do it later on 
once we get the full mesh down because that way I can go ahead and just tweak things as it seems appropriate and not worry about um, messing up any of my references. I can just do it once the mesh is complete. So we'll go ahead and begin modeling here. And the first thing I want to do is go ahead and go into edit mode and let's select everything from the front on basically or from the middle on and then just hit H to hide it. This way it gets it out of our viewport uh, from the back view, clearing up our view and allowing us to really see what we're working with. So the first thing that I want to do is go ahead and pick out some primary places to extrude my edge loops. Number one being the, the panel line here. And this is for the hood and whatnot, or the trunk. So let's see if we can pull up a real good reference just from the side to see how that flows. So we can see it flows straight back to the side panel and up. So let's go ahead and do that first. And so I'm going to select these two at vertices, hit E to extrude, and take it all the way up. And then we can see that it's going to come up to right about in here. And so we'll just pull that in to there, straighten it out by rotating with R. And then we can go ahead and see that this is going to come down from, from here, which is going to be this vertice, basically. And it's going to go straight down and merge with this. And so we want to go ahead and get that line as well. I'm going to go ahead and select these edges and extrude them up to give me one more line. And the reason that I want one more edge in here is because we have this turning point right here on our edges. And if I just extruded these straight out, then I wouldn't have another edge loop around this edge to sharpen that up if I needed to. So I want to go ahead and just add that. We'll pull these up. And going back to our reference, we can see that this is pretty much a straight line right down here. So let's go ahead and just scale these to zero along the x-axis by hitting S and X and then zero, like that. And, and so we can see that the top of the car is a little, it's not quite wide enough. So I'm going to turn on my proportional editing. And with this portion selected, I'm just going to hit G and X and pull that out along the x-axis. Although you can see that I already had my proportional editing on. So I'll turn it on again. And then hit G and X and just pull it out just a little bit, about like that. And we'll maybe pull this side in just a little bit. And then we need to go ahead and scale these to zero along the X again. And then we can just extrude this straight down. I'm going to extrude it once to the middle. And then we'll fill this loop here or this edge. And now you can see that we need to kind of compensate between these two because we've got this this going on here. But let's take another quick look at our reference and make sure that that's a straight line. And so let's just scroll through these. And we're just looking at them. And it would definitely appear that this is just a straight line back. And so we need to kind of compensate between our references. I'm going to select all these, hit S, X, and 0, and pull it out to about right there. And we'll maybe actually just rotate it just a little bit. It's hard to say whether it is or not. And in the case of the tutorial, you know, although we want to, of course, accuracy is always a concern for learning purposes. It's not going to necessarily matter. So if this is just a little bit off, it's not a huge concern. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add in another edge loop here and then pull it up just a tiny bit along the Z axis by hitting G, Z, and then holding down shift to make it a much smoother, uh, minute action. And then we'll just fill in these vertices. And the reason that I didn't connect it here is because of this little lip here that we want to be able to maintain. Okay, so now I'm ready to go ahead and fill in this area. And I'm first going to take these two edges, and we can see that on a reference this comes back like this, the wheel well. And we want to maintain that shape, and so these are right in place to do that. So I'm just going to extrude this back to about there to line up with this vertice. And you can see we'll add in another edge loop here. And then we want to go ahead and add in two loops here, which we can then pull up like so, giving us the edge for that, that curve. And we can fill in these faces. And let's go ahead and add in our loop here. I'll just control R and middle click. And then I'm going to take it up just a tiny bit along the Z axis again to smooth out this curve. And we'll do the same thing here. Let me just smooth these out a little bit. And we can fill these in. And I want to go ahead and smooth these out as well. So I'm just going to pull them up 
pull these around just to match that shape. And then we'll just alt right click on these four to fill in that face. Let's maybe bring this along a little bit, smoothing out that curve and the same thing here. Okay. I'm going to pull this back just a little bit to look at our reference. So this is looking good. Let's go ahead and see what we need to do to fill in this space, which really what we can do, well, first I want to hit Control E on this edge and slide it over just to even those out. And then we're just going to hit Control R, middle click, and then fill in these faces like so. And that f finishes off that area. And then we can maybe pull these down a little bit to bring down that curve a little bit. Okay, so you can see the shape that we're getting here is pretty close to what we're looking at for the whole car. And we'll pull these up a little bit. There we go. Okay. So now I want to go ahead and move along to the back panel. And on the back panel, once again, I want to pull out some key points. And so the one, the easy solution that I see here is this loop here, or this section here, is just straight across. There's no, no indentions, no details, nothing like that to interrupt our edge flow. So let's go ahead and extrude those. So I'm going to add in a loop here and a loop here. And I'm going to select those, pull them out just a little bit to smooth out our curve again. Just do a little bit of cleanup work just to make sure things are nice and clean. And then I'm going to select these two edges, extrude it back to there, pull it back just a little bit. And actually, no, I'm not going to pull it back at all, because you'll notice that from the side, this is right in line with the edge of this, and from the back, it's also right in line with this. It just means that we need to pull this area out to match our wheel well shape. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and keep extruding this out. So I'll extrude, go out to about the edge of this thing here, this air, air vent, I guess it would be, and we'll pull it back along the x-axis. And as you can see, we're needing to compensate once more. But that's okay. One thing I want to do is I want to keep this line level, since we can see that the, the bottom edge of the tail lights is level. And so I can use that as a reference point. Okay. I'm going to also scale it along to zero along the y. And then we're going to extrude this straight back all the way. Let me pull it out slightly. And then let's go ahead and add in just two more edge loops, pull them out slightly, and take a look. Okay, so this is looking good. Let's go ahead and pull in a nice angle from the back view. There we go, this is good. So we can see that it's, mo it's got a little bit of a curve, but it's mostly flat. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit more curve to this. Pulling this back a little bit. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and select this whole top edge, extrude it up like this. And once more, I'm compensating, and do remember that we're using the side as our primary reference, so I'm going to use it as the location for each of these main elements versus the back, which is going to have a lot more distortion than the, than the side will. I'm going to go ahead and add in another edge loop right here, and then this will also allow me to go ahead and smooth this out just a little bit. And the reason that I'm adding that in is now I can bring this up like this and once more, or actually no, I'll just fill that in there and fill these. Just like this area. Pull it in slightly. Oh, nope, actually I don't want to pull it in at all. You'll notice that this edge, again, is straight up. And so I want to actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete this edge that I created. And I'm going to extrude these straight up like this. And then we will merge these together. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit Shift S, or actually I'll just turn on snapping, which you can see is set to my vertex. I'm going to pull these two vertices out first, I'm going to hit S, X, and 0 to scale it to 0. And I'm going to hit G and X, and then holding down Control, hover over one of these vertices here. Okay, that just lines them all up. 
Now, before we go any further, so it keeps since it keeps throwing us off, let's go ahead and select our wheel well areas, and we're going to go ahead and pull them out. And so we'll select these. Actually, first let's just select just the inner loops, and we're going to pull them out to match the wheel wells. I'm going to pull out to about there. And let's take a look at our reference, and we can see that there's a slight curve on these. So we're going to go ahead and pull out there, and then deselect the tops and bottoms of these. And then with our proportional editing on, we'll just pull it out just slightly, just add that little bit of a curve. Okay, now I'll turn that off, and let's take a closer look at things. We can go ahead and pull these out. So I'm just doing some general tweaking here to get the shape down. And of course, we'll really nail down the shape once it comes to the, the next section. Or not necessarily the next section, but whenever we go in and do the fine, fine tweaking. I'll pull this out to make this transition smooth. I'm going to go ahead and fill in these faces. Give me a little more to visualize. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and slide these two up just a little bit to line up with this, such that I can now go in and add a a second edge loop here. Actually, no, I'm not going to add that edge loop there yet. Um, not sure that I need it. Okay. This is looking about right. We're going to go ahead and leave that for the time being. Oh, wait, no. We need to go ahead and bring these together. In this case, actually, I am going to go ahead and add in that extra edge loop because it allows me to bring these out to line up with that. And then we'll go ahead and pull this out slightly. And just smooth these out. Then we'll perhaps slide these along just a little bit, smooth out that transition. Okay, so it's still coming together. We'll go ahead and be sure we save our file. And let's go ahead and just jump on to finishing the back. So I'm going to go ahead and extrude these areas down. And I want to start laying out where these will all be. So I'm going to extrude this down. And we'll pull it in along the x-axis. The main thing here, since these are our references are different, the main thing is we want to match this angle. And so we can see this is coming down right about like that. So that'll do well. I'm going to go ahead and add in another edge loop here. And we'll leave it just about like that. I'm going to go ahead and add an edge loop there, which then I will fill this face and fill that face. You can see we maybe need to smooth these out just a little bit more.
OK. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at this. We'll pull in another angle real quick just to see more of what we're doing. So I want to go ahead and extrude this nice line across here. Do that. I'm going to go ahead and extrude this down twice. Actually, we'll do three times because this way I can go ahead and pull this out along the x-axis and then just extrude this straight along. Rotate it along the z-axis as I go to match roughly the same angle. I'm going to go to top view real quick and go ahead and just add loops where I need them to match the uh, same as the portion above it. So you need to pull this in like so. And that should be about right. Okay. Now let's go ahead and fill in these areas here. I'm going to go ahead and add another edge loop here for the license plate area, which will then match up top, because this way we can just fill these spaces. And then we will immediately go ahead and add in another edge loop there. As we can see, we're going to need to connect this. And this then sets us up to perfectly go ahead and start extruding this in. So I'm just going to select this, hit E to extrude, right click, scale in, and then scale along the X as well, which actually serves a dual purpose. What it does, it brings this edge in, providing us this ridge but it also brings this back out from the scaling, thus smoothing out this surface. So it actually serves two things. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and deselect this portion, and uh, let's go ahead and add in another edge loop here, take it right up to the top, and another one here, and then we're gonna select these three, extrude them back, rotate to match the angle, pull them back, this, and then we can use these to start filling in this area. So I want to go ahead and uh, let's see how do we want to do this. I want to let's fill in these, fill in those. Oh, nope, that's not quite what I want to do actually because I want that to be a little bit stronger. I need a nice sharp ridge here. And so what I'm going to do is let's select this. Um, well, let's see, let's take another look. We can see this goes back through here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that first. I'm gonna go ahead and delete these faces just so I have a little more to play with. And I'm going to select this, and we're gonna extrude it down twice. I'm gonna go ahead and actually delete these faces too. I don't like how this was working out. And so we'll just delete all these, and we'll do one side at a time. So first thing, let's go ahead and pull this up and we want to match this angle here because that's going to be one of the things that will sharpen up this ridge for us. And then we're going to take this, once again, match that angle, and then we're going to extrude it in because what this then allows us to do is have three vertices to which we can fill in that face there, which will then bring down or actually, no, we need to connect it down here. And you can see we may need to do some smoothing. There we are. And the reason I want to do this is because this edge just filters out to nothing. And so I need this to be a continuous line across here, which then means I'm going to go ahead and delete this face here. These areas can be fairly tricky. I'm going to add in another loop there, pull it out along the X just barely to smooth it. Fill that face. We'll take this straight back. Back along there. And then we can see that we're going to have two faces here. So I want to go ahead and extrude this one once. And we'll fill this face. See, we need to pull this down. And then we can fill it. And we'll take it back up. 
And what I want to do here is continue this loop all the way down and through here the same way so I can add in an, a loop all the way along this edge to sharpen that up. So we'll go ahead and extrude these areas in, fill in that face, and then we'll go ahead and add another loop here to which we will fill this face. There we go. So now I can go ahead and pull these back a little bit more. You can see this is actually inverted. It needs to be going in this way. And I'm going to go ahead and merge this with that vertice there. We're going to smooth these out. We'll fill in this face. You can see we need to add another edge loop here to get rid of this triangle. So we'll delete that face, add the edge loop, fill in the faces. Please just bear, me, bear with me during this section. It can be rather tedious, but hopefully it'll be quite rewarding at the end. And you'll notice that probably what we're going to do is we'll duplicate this whole thing and merge it down here. You can see that we've got our circular loop all the way along there, so if we want to sharpen up this edge, we can. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and select these areas. And we're going to duplicate this down. So I'm going to hit Shift-D, move it down, maybe M and Z, mirror along the Z-axis. Scale it down. Although I want to scale only along the X, or the Z and the Y. That way I keep my depth, so I'm going to hit S and then Shift-X to exclude the Y-axis. And then we're just going to use our snapping. If we get it roughly back, we'll snap this here, snap that there. W, remove doubles. And I didn't actually remove anything. Let's see, we need to add in this extra loop here. Oh, we didn't remove anything because I have, um, I have auto merge editing on already. Okay, there we are. So now we're going to fill in this face. So we'll go ahead and select this whole thing, slide it back. This one, slide it back. Which allows me to fill this. And finally, we can select this whole area and extrude it back. thus creating that air vent. There we go. And now we're going to go ahead and smooth out these areas. Make sure that we're getting a nice smooth transition between them. You know, this is definitely, this area is a prime example of what makes car modeling challenging. And definitely one of the reasons that so many people call for a tutorial on this. So I do hope that this has been helpful to you. Again, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask on Blender Cookie either in the comments or use a support ticket via our support page. I'm always happy to help when I can. I'm going to go ahead and select this area. Pull it out a little bit along the x-axis. We'll do the same thing here. Okay, so now now that we have one air vent done, we can see that we need to do it again uh, down here, unfortunately. 
but this one is much smaller, and I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this. We'll just select it, Shift D to duplicate, scale down along the Y and the Z, move it into place. And we can see it's going to fit right in there. Bring these along. And since this one's much smaller, we don't need quite so many edge loops. I'm going to delete this center one by selecting it and hit X, delete edge loop. Same thing there. We'll select this area. And we're going to pull it, move it back. We'll slide these along. Get this roughly positioned. And then we can go ahead and just use snapping. And be sure that we're, we're snapping to the, uh, to the original piece, not the, not the original to the vent, since the vent is what we're modifying. Okay, seeing there. See, that wasn't too painful. I mean, nothing spectacular, but we lived through it. And so now looking at this again, we can see we've got a nice straight edge along here, so we'll go ahead and do that. So I want to extrude this bottom edge down one. We'll just take it straight down along the z-axis. Move the whole thing up. Maybe move the whole thing out along the x-axis to match our angle. Okay, and then we're going to select this, and from the top view, extrude it out each time, just matching the the previous one, roughly anyway, about like so, and then we can actually pull it in some. about like that. Okay, so that's looking good. Let's go ahead and we want to continue this transition on the vent as well. And so let's go ahead and select these three vertices here, actually just the two center ones, and we're going to extrude them same way, but going in a little bit. which point then we can add in another edge loop here, fill this face, and then fill each of these. And since that's a sharp edge, we'll just bring this straight down, which then we need to smooth this out. Or actually, we just need to make these match this We'll just take it down to the z-axis and take it in along the y, in along the y. take this out a little bit, which then will smooth this curve 
Excuse me for a second while I grab a drink. Okay, now we can go ahead and fill in these spaces as well. Which chances are we're probably going to end up adding in another edge loop. Uh, yeah, we will, which is actually good because it allows us to give in, get that nice sharp edge. I'm just hitting G and Y to snap back to that. Fill these faces. Check it out from the side view. And actually, that was wrong in that these actually need to come out. So you can see I'm going one by one and snapping it back to the previous vertice next to it. And then actually we're going to take it in just the slightest amount. And then we'll pull these out as well. Since it's actually a smooth transition, I didn't realize that. Oh, no, I was right the first time. Uh, since I was like looking at the top part, not the bottom part. Okay. This should serve us well, but I want to go ahead and pull these in further. We're going to select these areas. Pull them up. Do the same thing here. And the reason being is I want to get a little more arc on this whole area. Okay. So this then leaves us with the, the license plate area to do. And perhaps we ought to bring in these a little bit more, which then means these ones as well. Bring these in and these to get kind of that swoosh here that you see right here. Okay. So now let's do the license plate area and you can see that it fills in just this space here, which is conveniently easy to do. In fact, in fact, we're just going to select this area. We'll maybe select just the edges and we're going to position the cursor right about there and scale along the X away from it. Back, rotate just a little bit. Pull these back up. There we go. Now we can just select this. Hit E to extrude, scale in just a teeniest bit, it's got a little extra along the Z to compensate for the length versus the height difference, and then we'll just extrude it in. We can pull these back, extrude again, once again compensating for the differences between the height and the, the height and the width by extruding a little extra. A little extra along the Z. We can pull this back. And then we can go ahead and just fill in this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this whole side loop, hit E to extrude, grab it, match it to the correct vertice. On this case, I want to be sure to match it to the bottom. I want to exclude the Z axis because it does move along the Y a little bit. There we are. See, we need, then need to go back and snap these as well.
And I'm going to go ahead and select this whole inner area and just scale it to zero along the X or along the Y actually just to flatten it all out. There we are. Okay, so we're making real good progress here. I know it's a bit slow, but it, that's one of, the, one of the lovely advantages to modeling a car is that it is a tedious process. Okay, on this, I want this to merge out real smoothly. So what I'm going to do is I've got four vertices here, two here. And so if I hit E to extrude, scale this down and pull it out along the Y, I can then fill that face, and then I'm left with a quad here and a quad here and a nice transition to nothing. Although I need to pull this in along the X as well. Good technique for managing your topology flow without getting overly complicated. I'll go ahead and fill in this face, and then I want to go ahead and pull these down to match this curve here. And then we'll just hit E to extrude, snap it to this one, this one here. And with our auto merge editing on, we don't need to do anything else. Add in this curve. Snap that for some reason that it wasn't snapped. Okay, and then we're just going to extrude this in right here and along the x-axis, pull it down, and then we'll fill in this here. We're not going to be worrying too much about the bottom of the car. I think I've mentioned that in the beginning. But we want just enough to give the indication that it's there. Just so you can't see it from the render. And actually I'm going to split this back and separate this out. Which then allows me to select this. Extrude it in. Pull it in along the Y. Pull it down a little bit. Pull this up, snap that to the Z along there. Pull this in and then fill in that face there, which then allows me to add an edge in there if I need to, or I can very easily extrude it in further. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add in, well, nope, not going to worry about that. Let's go ahead and do the, the trunk area now. And we'll just do this fairly quickly. Um, I'm going to actually go ahead and leave the spoiler for another part as it's getting fairly long here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're actually not going to do the trunk area. We're going to go ahead and do this bottom area and then we'll save the trunk and things like that for the next section just so that we don't get obscenely long. I don't want to bore you all to death. So let's go ahead and just do this, this bottom portion. And so you can see that we're compensating once again. But what we can do is we want to select this edge and let's just hit control E and edge slide it right along to the edge here. And then we'll select this bottom portion up to here. And we're going to hit X and delete faces. And then we're just going to nicely smooth these out. Get a little bit of a curve going on. And we'll just select this area, hit E to extrude. Scale in, and E to extrude, scale in again, and this time we're going to pull back along the y-axis. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and deselect this, deselect that. We're going to fill in this face here. And you can actually see that this ridge, well, no, not really, never mind. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two vertices and pull them out a little bit. And what it does is gives this kind of transition here that you're seeing here. 
you know, there's not necessarily a sharp ridge right there, but it's enough of a transition between this and this that it's noticeable. We'll go ahead and select these and pull them out. And then we're going to select this edge, deselect all these extra vertices, and then we'll extrude it in once more, scale Y to zero. Okay, and let's go ahead and fill in this face. So we're going to go ahead and select these two faces, pull this vertice back, extrude these out along the X, fill this in, and then fill this face, because then that continues this bottom loop along here. And there we are. And once we add in the subsurf, that will flow very nicely. Okay. So let's see. From this point, you can see that we're ready to go on and do the spoiler area, including the hood, or, or excuse me, the trunk, and then we'll be ready to move on. And I think the next section after that, we'll probably do the wheels and then go in and do all the small details like the mirrors, the windows, and whatnot.